Hi, this is Garrick Huey, Head of Broadcast Sales at Advanced Systems Group. Welcome to Remote Control, a webinar series from Silicon Valley Video that is focused on innovations in remote production. Today, we're talking with Bob Coniglia of Blackmagic Design. How are you doing today, Bob? I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for having me. Great. Well, the focus of this video series is how folks are using your products, Blackmagic Design, for remote production during COVID-19. And also, what you would have introduced at NAB had we been at a show. And so I'll just turn it over to you and tell you where would you like to start? All right, yeah. So um, actually, a lot of people are using uh, our products to do uh, Zoom calls like this. Um, I am actually set up myself with a green screen and uh, I have a couple other, I have another camera that uh, shows my A10 mini switcher. And, um, and then I can also go to slides, which I'll go to in a second. So we make a, a bunch of different parts uh, that go along with um, helping people to, to do streaming from home and, uh, and uh, in this crazy world of ours that sort of advance the process. I mean, a lot of people have been doing these kinds of things for a while, but not to the extent that they're doing it now. Um, I'll go to my slides and, and, and show you a couple things that we're doing. So um, we have the A10 Mini and Mini Pro. I'll get to them in a second, but people are using our web presenter, which we announced uh, several years ago, but this is a great way to get SDI and HDMI and, 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 and it turns into a webcam, so it's really easy for people to get out. As I said, the A10 Mini Pro, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, and then we also have even Decklink cards, so, and our Ultra Studio products. So all those kind of products are products that people can use to um, you know, plug a camera in uh, up to four cameras on the A10 Mini Pro, so I could plug in four different sources, and I can actually do streaming. Uh, I have a couple of mic inputs. We just did an, a software update for both the A10 Mini and A10 Mini Pro that allow you to, to put uh, delay uh, on those mic inputs so you can match and not be out of sync, which is always great. Uh, the A10 Mini Pro also features the ability to uh, record onto a USB-C uh, disc if you if you have one and uh, as this at the same time that you're streaming so you can stream directly from it there's a built-in encoder which allows that streaming which is really nice because you're able to um, uh, kind of uh, you, you stream directly using the encoder that's built in rather than the one that's in the computer or software or whatever so you're not uh, struggling uh, with drop frames and things like that um, and as I say you can record out to even our our multi-dock, which has uh, USB-C, so you can record there to do longer records if you need to. And uh, the actual panel itself, which I have here, and I'll show you in one more second, but we also have the ability now to control our pocket cinema cameras, so they act like studio cameras. So these are cinema cameras normally, but you take the USB, or take the HDMI out, and the, you can actually control it with the software like you do for our larger switchers. So this turns that into the webcam, like I have uh, right here, and then you also get a multi-view on the on the Mini Pro, which is really great, so that you can see uh, all of your sources. You can see your media player where you have stills or slides, and then you have your recording window, your streaming window, and then a window with just the audio inputs, which is also uh, a great handy thing to have. And uh, I'll just cut back to me for a second and show you. So I'm, like I said, down in my basement and uh, I'm using a green screen. There it is, uh, the magic of it. Uh, it's actually a picture of my family room upstairs, but my wife didn't think that would be a good place for me to be uh, held up all day. Uh, so I, I did that, set it up down here, which is great. And I, I can uh, come to, uh, this is the A10 Mini, like I said, so um, I can cut to any of the sources. When I go to four, which is the one, um, if I go to this one, right, so I put it in preview, I'm going to do a dissolve, I'm going to go back to my slides. <laughs> so um, I'm able to show everything from down here, but also use it to, to, to do what I'm, what I'm, um, uh, trying to stream out to everybody, which is which is really great, and um, it's uh, it's just another example of what people are doing. Because when you elevate your Zoom experience, I think it lends for people to actually want to continue to do these even after the pandemic's over. And I think that's important because um, you know the more exposure that people get to using some of these tools, the more they're going to want to use them even when we're back to normal, uh, whenever that is. And I think it also, you know, maybe people will just either do more 
meetings or more you can reach out to more customers this way if you're you know without having to travel as often um, but I think that you know this kind of um, uh, technology has has been there for a while but now it's sort of got accelerated and you know you mentioned earlier about the the fact that um, you know what we're going to show at, at NEB and uh, the A10 Mini Pro was the one that was going to be uh, announced there and that we were able to push forward to a little bit before the NAB time frame so it came out in early April and when we did that announcement we made uh, we made some announcements on improving the software for the original A10 mini so if I go back to this one so the original A10 mini which we launched at the end of last year um, now has the ability to do the camera control which is great and the audio delay uh, and that goes with the mini pro and then the other thing we did was we um, did an update to the hyperdex so now they record in h.264 with the AAC audio so this way if you record uh, H.264 you can upload to YouTube because it's it matches what uh, what YouTube's expecting uh, we also increase the, the 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 file sizes that could be almost you know over three hours in a file uh, we do now faster trans uh, transfers so you can actually uh, FTP files to and from the hyperdeck uh, mini uh, up to 110 megabits per second which is obviously very fast uh, so that was another update that we did and again, something that we may have done at NEB, but we didn't, but uh, since we didn't have one, but we were able to show those off. And as I say, now these pocket cinema camera uh, 4K and 6Ks are able to be used as studio cameras in addition to being um, cameras that you would use uh, for cinema work. And um, one thing I will tell everybody is that if you follow us on Twitter, uh, at blackmagic underscore news, then you'll get notices of all of our software updates. We just did a software update to DaVinci Resolve this week, and um, and all of the updates that we do, we, we do uh, announce on, on Twitter so that it's easy to follow. That's the, one of the first pages I go to every morning just to make sure I'm up to date on all our Blackmagic software. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, That's uh, perfect. It's great. Wow. You have been anticipating all the long-term changes, and, and we're seeing these products really, really are very useful right now and for the future. So you've planned well. Well, I think we, you know, we started with some of the products before the pandemic, and then we accelerated some of our our needs uh, to to get things out uh, during it. And uh, one of the things that we also found not not something that we developed, but there are some new um, fiber optic HDMI cables that run to a hundred meters. So this way, you're getting really good um, long cables, and it still does the two way communication with the camera for camera shading. So this really kind of uh, raises the bar of what you can do with those. Well, very powerful, super powerful. Anything else? Yeah, um, you know, we, we always have uh, an update to resolve. We just did one today. Uh, we're finding that people are actually doing uh, full-on post-production remotely by being able to um, share projects, uh, you know, by sending sending uh, the DRP files, which are real lightweight. As long as people have the media, they're using shared media, they're using cloud storage to be able to tie into uh, doing sessions to, to try and keep things moving. So we're seeing a lot of, of that. And like I said, you know, it's, it's, it's caused a lot of people to try and become more uh, creative uh, because of this uh, confinement to be able to do some workflows that I think will catch on to the point where we'll see a lot more people doing this type of work going forward, not because they have to, just because it works efficiently. Yeah, and they're able to. Well, Bob, thank you very much for talking with us today. This is Garrick Huey with Advanced Systems Group. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time on Silicon Valley Videos Remote Control.